Welcome to the St. Louis Downtown Airport. My name is Terry Bowman. I'm one of the firefighters here at the airport. Hi, my name is Eric Dahl, Airport Director. We're going to take a quick tour today of the Airport Administration and Fire Station and the Everest Bay and a little quick tour of the airport. Terry, we'll catch up with you later. Why don't you guys come with me? So here at the Airport Administration and Fire Station building, we have staff on duty 24-7 to make sure that the airport is always safe. Here, one of our critical personnel, Colin Rollerkite, our safety management specialist, who does all of our driver's education, insurance, and is critical to our Part 1 through 9 certification process. Fun facts about the airport is that we are 1,000 acres in size, have about 300 acres of developable land. We have about 20 aeronautical businesses, including our fixed base operator, Jet Aviation. And we're three and a half miles from the Gateway Arch in downtown St. Louis. By State Development began operating the airport in 1965, and today we are the third busiest airport in the state of Illinois, the second busiest general aviation airport in the St. Louis region. We do have a large conference room available, the Airport's Emergency Operations Center, which the region uses to respond to aircraft accidents and incidents. Uh, right now, the room is set up to train for CPR, and we do train CPR for all different age groups. Right now, we have three adult dummies and one infant. This room is also used by a community for different types of meetings, and it's available for all of our tenants to use as well. Our next stop on the tour will be the Airport Operations Center, where firefighter RJ will be waiting for us. The Airport Emergency Operations Center is where the firefighter who's on duty will be spending most of their time. It has all of the equipment necessary, all the flight schedules, and right now, firefighter RJ is learning more about aircraft familiarization, hazmat, and other types of tools to do his job more proficiently. Our next stop will be the airport's apparatus bay where all of our fire department vehicles are stored. Welcome to the St. Louis Downtown Airport Fire Department Apparatus Bay. Today I'm going to give you a tour of all the vehicles and apparatus we have in this facility. But first I'd like to take you over to our fire extinguisher training prop we have on the facility. We're very fortunate, this is actually a live fire training prop. It actually gives you some kind of a heat feedback. So when you have participants training, they're actually like they're really fighting a real fire. So we come over here, the next vehicle we're going to come up to is Incident Support Vehicle 5399. This vehicle was specifically designed by Bi State Development for us. It actually has two cots EMS supplies inside. We actually have a laptop, computer, Wi-Fi for actually any kind of command structure. We're also very fortunate that it actually has an ADA compliant wheelchair lift on it. So if we had an incident on the field, we could actually get everybody off the field. The vehicle we're coming up with now is Airport Rescue 92. This vehicle itself, we use this daily for airfield inspections twice a day, and we also use it for EMS response or any kind of wildlife response. Basically, any response that we do not use uh, the aircraft rescue firefighting uh, apparatus that we're gonna be showing you next. Fun fact for the apparatus, this vehicle right here has 3,000 gallons of water. It actually is a six by six, so I can lock in all three axles. But we're actually, we're gonna take this truck outside and I'm gonna give you a tour. Follow me on out. Let's take a look at the truck today. The first compartment here is actually our structural panel. This specialty panel is designed to actually operate the pump and actually get water out to our hose lines. Here you have two of these two cylinders. One's argon, one's nitrogen. This truck actually has a couple of unique things. It actually has Helitron, which is a clean agent, and it has dry chemical uh, powder uh, agent. And these two cylinders actually supply the pressure to actually discharge those agents. This compartment here, this is actually the booster reel just for the Halotron system. It's a specialty agent, so it actually has its own system. Fire hose here, actually, is just for water and foam. It's just like any uh, structural truck you see with it pull up in your neighborhood. It actually, we pull it off the truck and it would operate just the same. This truck doesn't have a lot of space on it, so actually, even between our tires, we use storage. So these are our SCBA cylinders. There are backups for our SCBA packs are actually in our seats. I'm gonna open up these next two compartments together. Basically, this is our toolbox. Between our axes, to pry bars, to sledgehammers, to bolt cutters, anything we need to use to try to access something. We actually have a toolbox, uh, you know, sockets. Sometimes we have to take things apart. We try not to damage things if we have to. We, if we can uh, disassemble it and actually make it work in our favor, we will. Unique thing, it actually has two fire extinguishers on it. Sometimes all you need is a take is a fire extinguisher, not a fire hose. Come around the back. With this truck, the only ladder we actually have is this little giant ladder. It's very multiple, multi-use. We can actually set it up as an A-frame and climb onto wings, do other things that a regular straight ladder might not be suitable for. 
Under the truck, we have a tool that's actually hidden under. This pike pole down here is so long, the only place that we could mount it was under the truck. This next compartment right here, it actually has our hearse tools. This is a ram. It actually will go and we can actually express uh, things apart. This is our combo tool. You'll see on TV maybe a big cutter, a big spreader. This thing is unique, it's actually both. So from the tip, it actually will spread things apart and the middle will actually will be a cutter. So it actually is a middle ground tool. Unique tool for this, we have a piercing nozzle. This, we can actually hook a hose line to it and we can take it and we can get it through the skin of an aircraft. And actually, if we needed to get water to a very specific location before we even try to make access. Next compartment here, these, these lines right here are designed for the Hurst unit, actually that applies, supplies power to those units. We'll see the power unit shortly. Truck's got wheel chocks. Inside this black bag is, is a uh, pneumatic chisel. So basically, as I say, it's a big can opener. We take it and cut open the skin of uh, aircraft and anything like that. Up here is just a uh, power uh, supply. We can actually plug in tools running off this generator. Come to this compartment, we only have three spare CBA bottles, so we're not gonna leave spots empty, so another pair of bolt cutters, another fire extinguisher. You might as well have more tools than you need and leave spots open. This next compartment here, open it up. It's got quite a bit of stuff from our fill line, which we use to fill the tank, the 3,000 gallons of water, to extra hose to lengthen the fire hose, so if we needed more length, we open this up. This Hurst unit, this is the power unit. This is the hydraulic power that runs those tools that we showed you previously. Right here, this is our K12. This is a diamond, a bladed cut us off. We can cut metal, we can cut concrete. We've used it to cut aircraft apart for in training, and we can even cut concrete. It, it gives us a very versatile tool. Last compartment, we have this uh, double agent uh, booster reel that I'm gonna actually pull out. So this unit pulls out like this is because when we actually pull the line off, if we had to pull it off and fight the fire, which would be in front of the truck, it would drag. So it actually comes off and gives us the capability to walk right past the truck. So uniqueness on this is, just like a fire extinguisher, we, have, we can actually put dry chemical powder, we'll actually spray out of this nozzle and it actually can do water and foam. So it gives us multiple capabilities in one line. We made comment about the dry chemical system and the Helitron. These two large tanks is actually what stores uh, those agents. From the 500 pounds of Purple K to the 460 pounds of the Helitron agent. So those units are very special and you wouldn't see that normally on a structural truck. We're gonna come around the front of the truck. As we come up here, one of the most unique things about this truck compared to a structural truck is my turrets. A lot of times, if I'm pulling up to an uh, aircraft emergency, if it was on fire, I'd be inside the truck with no, uh, joysticks and I can actually throw 600 to 1200 gallons a minute of water out of this uh, nozzle. And this one actually can spray dry chemical distinguishing agent right out the middle. The top nozzle up there does 375 to 750 gallons a minute and it has a FLIR, which stands for forward looking infrared on the side. So it actually is a heat signature camera. So if I, for some reason, lost visibility, I could actually see a heat images on my screen in there and actually gives me very versatile to be able to fight fire. Also, the truck itself, if you underneath, there's two brass nozzles right below there. This truck has the capability of protecting itself. If I needed to, I could actually throw water at the ground. There's nozzles all the way down the middle of the, uh, the truck to actually protect me. And if I thought the truck was getting too hot, across the top of it, we have four nozzles that actually spray a water curtain down the front of my truck. So we're gonna give a tour of uh, the actual airfield. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing is uh, telling you how do I communicate with the tower and the process. So when you talk to the tower, you have to get their attention, ask for permission, and then they're gonna give you the permission. Once they do that, you have to repeat the permission back. We both need them to be on the same page so we know exactly what each other is doing. So if one of us is unclear of what the directions are, we should stop and make sure we're clear. Rescue 61 is on the east ramp at Alpha 1. I'd like to take Alpha 1, Bravo 1, Bravo to Bravo 7. And to the ground, Rescue 61 copies permission to proceed as requested. Thank you. 
And actually, they just gave me permission to go Alpha 1, which is Taxiway Alpha 1, which goes into, here's Taxiway Alpha. We'll go to Bravo 1 once we cross. When we come up to our next intersection, that'll be Taxiway Bravo, which will go all the way down full length to the end of runway 30 left, where we'll actually make our drive down. And Rescue 61 copies, hold short of runway 12 right at Bravo 7. Tower was sitting there verifying, telling me they do not want me to access the runway at that time. And that's just one of those communications back and forth that I understand that they do not want me to access the runway until they give me permission. Uh, Rescue 61 copies permission on runway 12 right. We're actually crossing onto the runway as we speak. This is the, the primary active runway on the airport as we uh, do it right now. And we're gonna make a pass right down the middle to give you the view of an aircraft coming into the airport. So we're lined up on runway 30 left. This is where aircraft would line up before they would start their takeoff roll to take off. As we're going down the runway, I'll just point out a few things. These the four lights to the left of us, there are Pappy lights, there are precision lights that light up different colors showing uh, if the uh, airplane is lined up properly for the runway. As we're going down the runway, you'll have multiple taxiways off to our, our right hand side and you'll have Bravo 7, Bravo 6, Bravo 5, and it actually goes down to Bravo 1. And while we're out here the whole time we're listening to the tower, if they needed us to uh, exit the runway or do anything, if they had an inbound plane or something like that, they would ask us to exit, and then they could give us permission back on here. Brand new control tower, which opened in 2008. The control tower actually controls all of the movement on the airfield, especially vehicles driving, planes taxiing, and they control all the airplanes inbound to the airport. So that you have two controllers, one on each frequency, coordinating ground movement and one coordinating air movement to work as a team. As we're coming to the end of the runway, we're gonna be coming up to taxiway Bravo 1. This is where we'll exit the runway and how we would end up going back to the ramp where we started off near the firehouse. And at the ground, uh, Rescue 61 like to take Bravo 1 and have access to drive uh, runway 23 and Charlie. So we're gonna be pulling up here onto runway 523. We're actually gonna discharge water and show you the operations of the turrets on this fire truck. On our final stop, St. Louis University at the St. Louis Downtown Airport is the first certified flight academy in the United States. Through the years, we share a common aviation history, dating back to the mid-1920s with the 1929 Curtis Wright Hangar, which was designed and built by Charles Lindbergh. Through the years, we've had such aviation legends as Amelia Earhart and Jimmy Doolittle visit our location. We hope you enjoyed your tour of St. Louis Downtown Airport. <laughs>